The big, yeah, that's always that's always been a big question on producers' minds when they're when they're ordering soil testing. Um, this year, we we really had to, uh, to really beat the band when it came down to winter wheat sampling because we tried to get in there before the winter wheat, which in some areas went a little bit earlier than than normal. Um, usually, we like. Uh, soil sampling at about, about start about this time of year, mid September, because the nights are cooler, the days are a little bit cooler. There's less microbial activity uh, in, in some of the areas. It's a little bit drier now, so it shouldn't be that much, um, much, much activity in the soil right now. Um, but typically, in some areas, we we almost have to go right behind the combines because the cold weather and the freeze up and the snow comes in real quick. So the big uh, important thing about that is try to keep the timing consistent. If you're with the client in October or, or you know the inclement weather is, uh, try to match that up for, for the next time you're out there. Same time of year, same time of the, uh, um, uh, when the weather's starting to change, try to stay in there to keep your, your uh, results uh, uh, semi-consistent and always the use of GPS is also important. Um, we have done some fields in very, very harsh condition, conditions where it's really wet and had to wait for freeze up to get on there. Um, the consistency there might get thrown out a little bit, but as long as we can get some proper techniques some proper uh, cores taken is, is um, from, the, from the same general areas as last year is where we like to start. I mean, we can't always wait for the, for the weather to get it done. So it's, it's trying to match all those things and kind of, a, kind of put it as an art form. Um, but generally speaking, the lower the microbial activity in the fall time, uh, the better, especially if you're going to be a spring applied uh, producer. Um, for the fall, for the fall term, you know, if we got to get in there now for an October uh, ammonia rush, um, we essentially don't have any choice. Uh, we can't soil sample after they've put down um, uh, ammonia or any, or any of the other types of fertilizer in that, for that matter. Uh, well, first and foremost is um, is proper soil sampling techniques is is the th on the top of our list when we're talking about uh, uh, soil testing and soil management. Um, proper equipment in the trucks, um, uh, gloves, proper sampling bags, um, proper uh, what we call bag and tagging or labeling of. Uh, of the of the sample bags, uh, so there's no mix-ups in, in uh, what you're actually sampling and where you're actually sampling. Uh, so that data management, first and foremost, of what you are doing out in the field, um, is is some of the best uh, information we can get when when providing our clients with the service. Um, other tips um, on especially on, on a fall like this, where where we can get still still get some pretty warm sunny days. There's still some active microbial activity in the soil. Uh, once the samples are collected, bagged and tagged, if they're not going to get analyzed real, uh, real quick or within the next day or so, um, the best thing we could recommend is cool that soil off in a, in a cool, a dry place, uh, preferably a refrigerator overnight, uh, or if it's going to be uh, more than a few days, uh, put them in the freezer and, and really, really freeze them up for the ride from, uh, from the field to the, to the uh, office or to the farm back to the, uh, to the lab. So when we talk about soil sampling, we, we've got grid sampling, we've got uh, zone sampling, we've got random. Any recommendation, uh, I mean from your perspective, what do you think is definitely the strongest? And, uh, and kind of what, why would you choose one over the other? For myself, I would definitely uh, go with the zone, production zone maintenance of the of fields. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, obviously because we're using different technologies uh, such as uh, layer information such as satellite imagery, uh, yield imagery, topography imagery, uh, electrical conductivity imagery or uh, electrical conductivity uh, information that we can collect through the fields. It really gives you uh, a, a good proper in-depth look of what's actually happening out in your field. Um, the field behind me here um, we've done in production zones and we've had some major, uh, major, uh, major level changes when we talk about nitrogen uh, in this part of the area. Um, if you look just behind you, there's actually a really low spot versus some nice crowning areas behind me uh, into the fields. And uh, to me, that, that gives you the better look, um, better overall look and fertility uh, management of that field. So that would be the, the, my first choice um, uh, in soil sampling. Secondly, 
uh, it would be a random, um, a random soil sampling with the use of GPS. Um, again, when we're random sampling, you got to make sure you're clear on where the, your soil sampling technicians are taking that soil, uh, whether it's from the low spots um, uh, or staying away from the low spots, staying away from the high crowned areas, staying away from the, the approaches, high compacted areas, uh, so on and so forth, and keep a consistent message. So the use of GPS for us is, is, um, is key one. Um, when doing that so that the, next, the following years, subsequent years, we can go back to those same spots. Uh, the other thing is the, um, is the right amount of soil. Um, we like to keep, uh, keep it to the, uh, the one core per eight acres, kind of, um, a kind of a benchmark on how much soil we actually take depending on the size of the field. Um, this way we ensure that the laboratories have enough material to do all the tests we, we are ordering from them.